great question is, in ethics is what is the good for the human agent? Uh, what is the purpose of our life? And uh, what we've been looking at uh, in Aristotle is uh, a mode of analysis which is meant to bring us to that question. In virtue of what would we say of a human person that he's a good human person? Uh, what makes the human agent to be a good human agent? The function analysis, as we're calling it, that we find in Aristotle and which was rehabilitated uh, in uh, recent times, uh, is meant to uh, be the device that enables us to answer that question. We saw that uh, it, uh, the structure of it is rather uh, straightforward. Uh, Geech's position is clearly the triumph of common sense over theory uh, in pointing out that uh, the way in which we appraise a car as a good one is, is by asking, well, what is an automobile? What's it for? Uh, and in, in the light of that kind of knowledge, we're able to, uh, to appraise a car as a good one or a bad one. Of course, even, even that kind of appraisal can be uh, very complicated. If we say so-and-so is a good golfer, <coughs> that doesn't mean that he performs just one swing well, but he has to have a whole uh, repertoire of, uh, of swings uh, in, uh, in, his, uh, in his game uh, before we're likely to say he's a good golfer. Sometimes we would qualify it and say, well, he drives well, or he's a good putter, or he has good approach shots, but that's about the sum total, one or the other uh, of those. So that we would say he's good in a sense, but not a good golfer in the sense that he doesn't play the game taken totally uh, well. Uh, so that even in these uh, seemingly very simple examples, we would find on analysis that they're, they're complicated enough so that we're not really startled to find that when we try to apply this uh, analysis, the function analysis to the human agent as such, that we're going to run into the recognition that it's really a very complicated thing uh, to talk about the function of a human being. But again, it's a complicated thing uh, to talk about the function of a golfer, for that matter, uh, or a Swiss Army knife. Huh? So uh, Aristotle is perfectly uh, ready uh, to acknowledge, uh, in fact, he's the one who brings it to our attention, that rational activity, the proposed definitive function of, of a human being, is ambiguous in the sense that it lends itself to a variety of connected meaning. So it's not purely equivocal, but it is what Thomas would call an analogous term. It has a set of meanings which are related and controlled uh, within, uh, within, uh, within that set. Uh, so Aristotle, uh, as, as I was indicating, gives three meanings right away uh, of rational activity, theoretical thinking, practical thinking, and those activities other than thinking which are amenable to the direction of reason. Now, what this, uh, what this comes down to uh, in uh, Aristotle and in Thomas and in uh, uh, many others uh, is a recognition of a distinction between intellectual virtues on the one hand and moral virtues on the other. Moral virtues tend to be, uh, the term virtue uh, 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 in, in the moral sense tends to be reserved for the excellence of rational activity in the most extended sense of the term. That is, insofar as our appetites come under the influence of reason. So what, what, uh, uh, what would be the first way in which one would uh, want to distinguish between intellectual virtues and, uh, and moral virtues? If we think of the excellences, the perfection, the doing well of theoretical thinking, what we're going to be reminded of are the sciences. Huh? Uh, uh, Aristotle uh, distinguishes a number of virtues of the theoretical use of our mind, a number of them. Uh, and what characterizes them, by and large, is this. Intellectual virtues are acquired by learning. Moral virtues are not. Now notice how this connects with, with an earlier discussion as to whether or not the study of moral philosophy will make us morally good. Uh, what Aristotle insists on at the beginning of the second uh, book of his Nicomachean Ethics is that the great difference between intellectual virtues and moral virtues is that the first intellectual virtues are learned they are things that we can be taught, uh, whereas moral virtues are not acquired by learning. 